Hi, I'm Jeff. I'm going to do a short presentation on the filament dryer that I built. It, it's a topic that comes up from time to time and there's a few different ways to do it. Um, so here is what I built. This is a sealed tote that's about one and a half cubic feet um, in metric that's about 300 by 300 by 450 millimeters. It happens to have a gasket um, for closing, just closing it sealed tight. I find that this type of tub, once it's assembled, it can fit as many as four spools of plastic, four regular one kilogram spools, more uh, give or take, depending on the size and shape of the actual spools themselves. So here's one. Here's another. So that's it in terms of um, spools that it could actually take. These are regular uh, 200 millimeter spools that are, uh, I think this is maybe 80 millimeters wide. Um, unfortunately, one of them has to be narrower in order for four to fit, but you kind of get the idea. Anyway, so I'll move on to how I constructed it. Inside I have reflective insulation pieces that are c cut up in little uh, to, to fit along on the side and the top. Here I have a piece cut out and hot glued into the top. It's This is Reflectix brand which is available in the US. I don't know what else is available in other regions. Also like I tend to use this thing to help dry out dust con containers. Going in a little bit further, I am using three different reptile heaters and I had, uh, you need to ap apply them to something so that you don't ruin the heater them itself. This is a piece of sheet metal that I cut and deburred and then carefully applied so I don't have bubbles inside. I'm able to have three at the same time. I have one in the bottom and then one on each side. And with this brand of reptile heater of this size, now this model is Reptitherm UTH model number RH5. This is 16 watts and I've got three of these in here. And they're connected using Wago 221 lever nuts. Um, and also what I tend to do is I have a little window down here where you could see a hygrometer I believe is the term. Um, there's a couple different sizes I like to use like this is one. Um, and that sometimes fits, sometimes I need to use the smaller one. Either way it gives me a good reading of what's inside. While this is a sealed container, I also have a couple holes in corners, in the back corners like this, and then two holes here. What that is, is you don't really want a completely sealed system when you're trying to dry because after some point, the, amount, the air inside will be saturated. And having a small number of holes to help bring in fresh air and expel the saturated air is beneficial. I wish I knew where that, how much ventilation is going to give you the best advantage. Less holes will allow you to have more heat in there, but after some point it's just going to be saturated air and just a few more holes might help you more. Something I forgot to bring up is like I have a pass through into the container this is a gland that's good for about seven millimeters pass through. I find this to be really helpful for the regular plastics you might use and that would be PLA, PETG, ABS, and ASA. Uh, those tend to be something that can be very easily done in this kind of container. For the higher temperature plastics such as polycarbonate and those that need even more heat, uh, I would 
go with some sort of toaster oven or countertop oven that would let you get the higher temperatures that you need. Something like this simply won't do to actually dry it out. It may help to keep them dry. What you want to do is make sure that they are extremely dry and those tend to want 10% or less humidity in the air around them to keep them dry. And with the more conventional materials you can get away with 20% pretty easily without detrimental effects and that's kind of what I go for here with regular plastics and like with nylon you'll want to treat that as a little bit more of an exotic material because it is very hygroscopic and uh, that was would be another one that I would want to keep at 10% or less for relative humidity and this concludes my short video on my filament dryer